Hi there, I'm Andrew Brown. Welcome to Real Time Music and Sound with Pure Data. In this um, video, we're going to be looking at tempo modulations. Oftentimes in the sequencing information we've looked at so far, we've pretty much counted on a steady tempo, which I guess is uh, typical for much uh, contemporary music. But it's also kind of interesting to uh, vary the tempo quite a bit, and that's what we're going to do uh, today. So the basis for all of these uh, tempo things in PD is the metro object. We're going to deal with it in beats per minute today. And we do that with um, the per min uh, setting. I'm going to start at 120 and we're going to use um, sort of double time at 120 just so we get some slightly faster uh, pulses. So typically if we want to start that metronome we do so with a toggle and if I put a bang on the outlet we'll be able to see the um, pulses coming out. If we want to change uh, the tempo we can send the metro message a tempo message um, I'm going to use a variable for the tempo and indicate that um, we're talking in tempo beats per minute so that can go in there uh, then when we pass um, a, a number to that that will number will replace the dollar one and you can get slower tempos, you can see the beat moving slower and then we can speed it up and the flashes uh, get much faster. So the basis for our um, modulating of tempo in this particular um, video are going to be done with a line object which will send a ramp to the tempo. So we'll be changing from one tempo to another tempo. So with the line object we can specify a value, let's say 200 beats per minute, and we can specify a time that it takes to get there. Oops, that should have been a message box. 200 beats per minute take 2,000 milliseconds or 2 seconds to get there. So if I start that and then click, then it will take that much time to get there not super obvious visually so let's slow it down to something much slower again over two seconds we'll go down to 40 milliseconds so when I click this message you can see that it's getting slower and slower and slower um, as we go in fact if we want to uh, visualize that we can put a number box on the outlet we can see the tempo numbers ramping up and ramping down. Okay, so that's all good and well, um, but let's make it make a noise. So we'll make a, a small kind of uh, percussion kind of sound. I'm going to use just a sine wave oscillator at 150 hertz as the tone um, for that. And I'm going to give it a pretty fast um, amplitude envelope um, in order to make it just a short percussive sound. Um, as we've often done before in this series, we'll use a V-line to do that um, and the envelope volume of one, a very quick attack of just a couple of milliseconds um, will take 200 milliseconds to decay, actually we'll go to zero and we'll take 200 milliseconds to decay and we'll start that decay after five milliseconds. Um, I'm going to use a trick I've used before which is to multiply the output to give us an exponential uh, curve on our amplitude envelope just for a bit more natural um, percussion sound um, okay so that's all good I'm going to put another overall volume control in here just to uh, make sure I've got a bit of control over what's going on that can go out to the deck Okay, and then we can trigger that with our metronome. So if we do that, we're hearing 
very simple pulse. Uh, just for fun, it might be nice if the um, beginning of that pulse was a little bit noisy. I'm just going to um, increase the amplitude so it'll be a bit louder at the beginning and do a very simple bit of wave shaping using the clip so that as it exceeds one it will briefly uh, clip be a little bit of sort of distortion from the sine wave in there uh, that will become a bit more evident as we go although if you're listening carefully you can here that already we're getting a slight uh, distortion at the beginning of the sound which just gives it the percussion a bit of attack all right getting sidetracked on synthesis um, if we want to then um, automate these tempo controls um, what we can do is to put a, um, use a variable for the target tempo um, and specify that target tempo randomly so, for example, I give it um, a value between 0 and 30, and I don't really want to go down to 0 as my smallest tempo. That's going to be much too slow. So I'll just offset it by 40, so that will be the slowest that we'll ever get. Um, and if I bang that random, set it going. going up to 315, randomize it again, goes down 146, randomize it again, it's faster, randomize it again, a little slower, a little faster, and down to 71. So that's the, um, the process basically for doing the um, modulation of the tempo. We can make this continue automatically by adding a second uh, metro every two seconds to re-trigger uh, that bang. And that will mean it will just keep going, constantly varying the tempo. that off for a sec. So the other thing just to make it sound a little bit more interesting would be to vary um, the dynamics. So we'll do that um, randomly. So we'll um, generate a random number up to 100 and we'll use a technique which we looked at a couple of videos earlier which was to use a pseudo Gaussian kind of process um, to make sure that we get some figures which are around about the center of the range and we do that by um, adding those values together and then averaging them. Averaging exactly to 50% would be um, a division you know by about 200 obviously for that rounding but I'm going to try and stick with my close to 0.5 um, value here so I'm going to divide by 400 um, instead Provide a number box just to see what those values are going to be and that value is going to be our volume there um, just to avoid any clicks we'll make sure that we keep our order of operation clear so that bang will first of all bang that random then this random and then execute the amplitude envelope Okay, let's hear that. So we're getting some variation in amplitude randomly, as well as um, a ramp up and down of tempos. So um, that's fantastic. Um, it sounds more interesting, of course, if you've got many of them. So just very quickly, if I copy and paste all of that, um, change the pitch of our percussion. It's a little, it's a little bit higher on this second one. And have them both go.
can do that in a very hard stereo by removing the DAC. And so forth. Um, so that's quite a dramatic uh, modulation of the tempo. You can of course use the same technique to do much more subtle tempo variations. So um, I hope you have fun doing that and I'll see you in another video.